Good afternoon Floss Tube. It's the afternoon of Wednesday the 31st of October 2018. My name's Caroline. I am I can be found on the web on my blogger blog on Caroline's at Caroline's Corner.blogspot.com. And you can find me around on Instagram and Twitter as at Caroline A. Kemp and Caroline is spelt with a K. Uh, this is my second video, so this is just to update you on what I've been getting up to since I last recorded at the end of September. So we may get invaded because it's half term, the kids are watching TV next door and I've got a cat who's complaining she's hungry. It's not quite her tea time yet, but she may come and have a word. Um, so let's get straight on with the stitching. Um, I haven't made a ton of progress since last time. Um, so the first piece I have to share with you is my Saturn to Sundays piece, Pomegranate Santa. Um, mostly since I last spoke to you, I finished Santa off completely and I've been working on the deer on the bottom. So I've been, I've got Rudolph in and one and a half of his friends and mostly you probably can't see it very well but I've been working on the snow and that's a lot of filling in. So still liking working on this piece. It just makes me smile every time I get it out of my bag. It's being stitched on some Lakeside Linen Vintage Late Exemplar. 36 count with the call for classic colour work stroke crescent colours. And that's for the stitch along on Instagram, which is um, hashtag Santa Cross Stitch Sundays. At the end of on my last video, I said I was next going to work on Glastonbury Garden by Forget Me Nots in Stitches. This is a class I took several years ago, I think 2010, with Lauren when she was in London. Um, I have actually found a better picture of the inside of the sewing case. That's the inside with all the pockets and that's the outside of the case. So, so far I've completed, I completed the outside of the case and the inside and I'm working on the pockets. I was, I've got the big pocket complete and the little pocket on the outside and what I was working on this time was the pocket that goes on the inside of this big one. That she Lauren likes to layer her pockets. I didn't get a lot done, just finished off that flower and I'm starting on this one because some of the um, flowers have got misaligned so I suspect I'm going to have to frog this pink that I've already done and redo it to, uh, so it all lines up. This is mostly stitched in sampler threads. Really, really pretty soft colours of sampler threads. Next up, I spent a week working on Prairie Garden. I was hoping to get it finished because if you remember, I only had a little bit left to go down this bottom. And I was almost there but then I have misaligned some of this side. It's all out by one stitch. And as it was an out enough that it was get, going to bug me, not for enough, I've um, had to start frogging it. So hopefully next time it comes up, it will get finished. This is on 32 count summer khaki using the needle point ink silks that came in the kit and here's the finished piece. It would be lovely to get this done because I've done all the other gardens in this series um, 
cloister garden was one of the first samplers I ever stitched about 20 years ago. So I do need to crack on and get, get them done. Next up is a piece you haven't actually seen, you have not seen before. I've been using a randomizer to select some, one of my class projects because I have a lot of class projects uh, from classes I've taken over the years that need finishing off. Um, and it pulled out another one of Lauren's projects which is called Along the River James, Williamsburg Bound. She designed it in 2012 for the Christmas in Williamsburg that used to be run by um, Jess Cross Stitch magazine. Um, I've finished the outside of the case. It's a little sewing pocket. This is one side. Um, absolutely beautiful, of course, with being one of Lauren's. And that's the back. As you can see, I stitched 2013 on it, so then I took the class. I've done the inside of the case. And what I've been I was working on this time round were the pockets. These are two little pockets to go inside the they're secret pockets on the inside of a two larger pockets that are covered in bargello. Um so this time around I just finished the nun stitching on this pocket and then made a start on the band at the top, decorative band at the top. There's a lot of different threads in this pocket. These are the silks for the Bargello. It also includes some needle point, um, some gentle arts threads. And some other silks, mostly water lilies and I think some silken colours as well. And a void, a void de soy as well. Hoping, because I'm not too far off with this one, that it will come up plenty of times and I can get it finished. It's certainly one of the closest I am to finishing. The next whip I worked on was Dorothy Walpole. I'm not sure I can fit the whole of Dorothy in on this screen. Um, she's a big girl. What I worked on this time was a little bit more of the border over here and this band of strawberries at the top are uh, my progress. This is on 40 count pearlized barley using the recommended DMC um, and as I said in my last video she's been on the go for a while now so I'm hoping I can pick up speed and I can finish her off in the next year or so because she's been on the go for about three or four years. Started as a stitch along on um, Sampler World Group, I think. This is, there you go, there's the whole of Dorothy. I just have this flower section to do at the bottom, which I think is the fun bit to stitch. I've done all the difficult slog bit up the top. Now currently, currently, I'm working on a, sorry I need my coffee, um, I'm working on a piece by Jackie Duplass of It's Finally Finished, it's called One Moment in Time. This was offered as an online class through the silver ne the sil is it Silent Needle Society on online. Um, I'll have to check that one. I keep wanting to call it the Silver Needle but that's the shop. Um, 
This was at the beginning of the year, Jackie, Jackie offered this one. Um, I'm currently working on the panels for the bag. I got, I got quite a good start, but um, there's a lot of backstitching in cream thread on cream linen using soy, soy super fine. You've got to do eight panels for the bag like this you probably can't you can probably just about make out the outline but it was incre it's incredibly hard on the eyes there's this lovely little sprig up the top i've done four of my eight panels and i'm currently working on number five there we go when i get to work on the flower sprigs i love it but i do i am fighting the uh, back stitching incredibly hard work and it was just really hard on my eyes there's also four pocket panels to do which are really fun I, I really do like doing this it's the flower design that sold me on this one this being Jackie of course there's a little quirks and on the inside of this pocket because you fold it over to finish it she stitched little ants So I'm past the halfway point. I just burnt out on it at the start of last year. Um, it's got some beautiful silk pinks. I just need to slog through the black back stitching. So I think I just need to put it away every so often to let my eyes recover. And then I can crack on. Once I get onto the smalls that go with the bag, it will probably go quite a bit quicker. I actually have a new start this time round. Um, as I was, Jackie Deplest was for, I was fortunate enough. Jackie was taught teaching in the UK. A friend Grace had arranged um, a, some a series of classes at her house down in Oxford, near Oxford, and we um, I was able to go on the Saturday of the classes and take this design called Contented Hours which is a beautiful little basket and for Sir Husif and the purples and greens are just so exactly my colours. If anyone who knows me will be able to tell you that um, I couldn't not take it. So here are the, here are the, th the silks, aren't they lovely? Beautiful colours. Mostly the class was about how to put the basket together. Um, so, but there was, I did manage to make a tiny, tiny start on the stitching. On one of the blacks, this, uh, this will eventually be the handle when I get it, get it done. So those are my whips for the time being. I act, and now I actually have a finish Bit finally finished object to share with you. Um, I have a large pile of things that need finishing and as I explained in my previous video I don't get a lot of time for this stuff. But, so I've been working on finishing this beautiful little scissor pouch from Just Nan. Um, this is called 20 Flowers. It was a shop exclusive for the Silver Needle back in 2004. I stitched it in 2012 I say I've just and have spent most of this year doing the finishing when it went was available there was a finishing kit by Pamela's finishing touch to go with it which I bought at the time so so we have the scissor fob there's the the bar pouch and there's the back with the little bottoms of the sheep on just open it up as you can see it's 2012 so charm's got up. and there's the scissor fob that goes with the set 
not intrinsically hard to put together but um, just time consuming because I rarely have more than an hour or so at a time so it would just be uh, I'm very glad to have that finally finished and usable because um, it's no good these things all sitting in a bag in an unfinished state so I need to decide what I'm going to fin try and finish next I suspect it will be some Christmas ornaments because I have the kids um, Christmas ornaments from last year that I stitched that are still still need finishing hello are you going to come and say hello you come and say hello for those of you who follow me on Instagram, you will know I have a cat. This is Florence. Say hello, Florence. She's very fluffy and occasionally comes and sits on my lap when I'm busy doing stuff. At the moment, however, she has she's only focused on her tummy. Aren't you? Because you think it's about tea time. With the clocks changing, she's uh, not not had not quite adjusted to the clocks. Finishing. What? I'm going to come and say hello to Floss Tube. Are you? And there's someone else creeping in. What do you say? Hello. Hello. This is Christopher. He's eight. Aren't you? One of the reasons I don't get a lot of time for sewing. Aren't you? Right, you're going to leave me in peace now. Yes. Goodbye. Especially for Mel, who asked me when the kids were going to feature in the videos. He's just gone into the other room and announced to his sister that he's on the floss tube. So while I was I'm getting back to uh, more business and stitching, while I was, um, Jackie was kind enough to bring some of her, some kits over and bits and bobs for sale when she was teaching. So I picked up, so my only new stash for this, this month was both by Jackie Duplessis. This is a little pouch called the Poppy's Pouch. It's made out of a bit of banding and again beautiful pinks and greens so looking forward to getting on to that when I've got a chance and I also picked up a retired design of Jackie's called Tulips for Spring which is a little etui that's the inside and that's the best picture I can find of the outside on the back of it there is a little verse but I can't find a picture that doesn't include the instructions so you have to wait for me to stitch that one again what sold me on it was it's purple lovely purple linen and lovely purple and green silks i think that's all i have to tell you about my stitching for the time being we, we may get invaded again so now on to knitting. I mentioned last time I'd finished my Maven shawl. I've now had a chance to block it. And I'm not sure I'll get it all in. But here you go. Here's the Maven shawl. Absolutely thrilled with how this has panned out. Not a lot of chance to wear it yet because um, it's not been light lacy shawl weather around these parts more woolly jumpers we, we have a small boy back with us are you just going to stay there right i knit this shawl in yarn from the border tart i put it back on Mm. Careful. Um, 
The bluey pink purple colour is some of her twins yarn, which is which was a blue face lesson. No, Christopher, I want stuff on sweatshirt. Thank you. Um 70% blue faced yeah, Leicester, 20% silk, 10% cashmere, and it was two skeins that she dyed identical, specifically for knitting shawls. And the stony colour is her Venus Four Ply Deluxe, which is 50% baby alpaca, 25% linen and 25% silk. In my last video, I said I was hoping to, I wanted to get this finished so we could go to Yarndale and show it, show it to Lindsay at the border tarp. But unfortunately, we didn't get to go because Rosie, my older daughter, was sick. Was sick on the day, so we didn't. So we had to pass on Yarndale. Unfortunately, excuse me, please. I get it. So having finished one shawl, of course I had to decide which shawl I was going to stitch, start knitting next, and decided that I would knit a, another of Helen Stewart shawls. I'm knitting the Fairy Hill shawl from Shawl Society number two. This was the first shawl in the Shawl Society for last year. I'm knitting it in more border tart yarn. This is amethyst. It has, um, it's got a gold sparkle running through it. I'm not sure what's happened to my yarn label? It's disappeared under something, hasn't it, Christopher? Um, have you got it? Thank you. Um, it is 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 5% stellina. And I'm loving knitting with it. And the shawl, as always, with one of Helen's shawls, is knitting up absolutely beautifully. I am uh, on to my third pattern repeat for the lace. Probably can't see. The light is going a lot here, so struggling. There we go. It's... Um, lovely light pink and it's just got light blue tinge where it's just been lightly overwashed with the indigo. Can you open the light a bit more? That would be good. Okay. Uh, this is a couple of weeks into knitting this shawl so I do like Helen's shawl for that. Sorry if this is a bit disjointed, having some help with it. Next up is my daughter's socks. These are the Hermione Everyday Socks by Dream in Fibre. Um, this is sock number two. I have finished sock number one. The yarn is Jo Knit Sew. That Rosie chose herself in the colourway Black Butterfly in a Merino Nylon Sparkle Sock. I'm almost at the toe decreases and then this one will be off the needles as well, hopefully by the next time I record and I can start another pair for myself. The yarn. And the small boy pulling a face. And the last piece that I'm currently knitting is my Scolay cardigan. Although we've had a, I had a bit of a disaster with this today because one of my needles has gotten broken. I suspect the involvement of a child. It wasn't me. But they both deny all knowledge. Because I left it on the, made the mistake of leaving it on the sofa, and I suspect it just the bag got sat on. So I'm well up, almost done with the increases for the bust. Let's see where if I can find my progress keeper. 
so the progress creeper marks how much I've done so I've done about half as much again from last time you, you saw it I'm quite pleased with the progress I'm making on this one it is being the design is by Carrie Westerman Skull A cardigan and I am knitting it in Blacker Lioness which is wool and linen so 50% Falklands wool and 50% linen in the colourway hematite and I'm hoping by next month I will have gotten to the end I will be up start making a start on the knitting the arms I will have reached the armholes right. so I think that's everything on knitting so now we're on to books and what I've been reading since I last spoke to you all. Start off with another Persephone book. This is one in their classics range where they put pictures on the front of some of their more popular books. This is called Little Boy Lost by Marganita Lasky. It was written in the late 1940s and is set in France in the aftermath of the Second World War. The her hero, Hilary, uh, married a Polish woman in Paris just as war was breaking out and had to escape the city on as the Germans invaded in 1940 the day after his son was born so he never saw that he saw only saw the child as a day old baby um, and then the, his wife was killed by the Gestapo and the child disappeared um, the, and the story is about some a, f a mutual friend managed to locate a possible child and it's about Hillary going out there and trying to work out if it is his son or not. I love this book, highly recommended. Then I have read two books by LCJ Oxenham, both reprinted by the LCJ Oxenham Society. You know, I, me I mentioned Elsie in the last episode. I really like her books. I've read Two Form Captains, Christopher, <laughs> and An Abbey Champion. Two Form Captains is set in Switzerland about two schools who are English schools based in Switzerland providing an English education for a lot of people who are out there to uh, take the cure for tu tuberculosis um, and the one of the lead characters uh, Taisy actually reappears in an Abbey Champion which is one Christopher more of her Abbey School books um, called the Abbey School series um, about she has a group of characters who live very close to an abbey one of them owns the abbey one of them has a hall um, one of them lives in the manor nearby um, and they go to school and this is Taisy who is the lead character in Two Form Captains reappears in this as having married one of the other characters in the book with two children and teaching folk dancing again I love this one but then I really like that whole series. Um, another book I dragged off the to read pile this week it was Contemporary White Work by Tracy Franklin, which is just a quick blast through of some white work techniques and how they can be used in a, the history of the techniques. Um, some examples this is pulled work um, historic examples of how it's a bit of the history and then looking at how these techniques can be used in a more contemporary fashion describing how to do the how to do the stitches and with some modern examples no actual projects in that one this is just really a 
how-to book, but if you're interested in white work, I thoroughly recommend it. And the one I'm, fi I'm fin reading at the moment is Number Nine Dream by D David Mitchell. I have really enjoyed some of David Mitchell's work. This isn't one of them. I am two thirds of the way through and I'm still trying to work out what's happening. So I suspect it won't be one that will make it onto my shelves in a big way, but I'm glad I've read it. I'll probably, um, um, hopefully, what what is happening in the book, which is, seems to be about um, set in uh, Japan, in a Tokyo, sort of near future Tokyo, and um, seems to be someone looking for his father, Christopher. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, I don't think it's his best. I much prefer Char Cloud Atlas and Ghost Written as uh, books. Right, are you going to say goodbye? Bye. Bye. Right, that's everything I've got for this time round. I will hopefully record again at the end of November. Um, show notes will be found under the um, bottom and I'd like to thank everyone who subscribed to my channel and who has left comments. They are very, very much appreciated and thank you very much all and I will see you again at the end of next month. Goodbye.